Okay, y'all, come on in. It's Saturday night. I'm prepping for tomorrow, so I'm getting started. So get a look at the menu, and of course, tomorrow is September birthdays. So you see what's on the menu. Tonight, I'm doing my salads, so I'm going to get all my salads done tonight, and then later on, uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to start the meat, so I'll be back with you. But for right now, we're going to go over here to the salad bar. Got a kale salad going on. I've already done my sous chef work, so all the ingredients are prepped for the kale salad. A one pound bag of kale. I've already chopped it. I've left one bag just so you know how to ground it up. And what I'm using here is just my little food chopper. And remember we talked about it before. You have to bruise the kale so that the ingredients will soak into it. So I've already bruised that much. And all you do is just put it on there. Don't turn it too much. Just sort of pulse, pulse it just about like that. And it's okay if a few of those leaves are left kind of big. They'll work. So that's enough of pulsing. And y'all going to see this is just real simple and easy. Most of the work in this is the prep, of course. So I've, okay, we got the uh, kale bruise. I've got one cup of red onions, two cups of fresh corn, just took it right off the cob, and, okay, of course the sous chef didn't bring my salt and pepper over here, so, I'm on the other side of the room, y'all, I'll be right back. Okay, you know I have to have all my condiments to go in there. Okay, so. One half of a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm just going to sprinkle. That's a teaspoon right there. And then I need a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Sprinkle it. Okay. And some of Tyra seasoning. This little seasoning goes a long way. I need to order some more. What do y'all think? Okay. So before I even put the uh, vinaigrette in there, I'm going to go ahead and get it stirred up. Make sure you just mix it up really, really good. And I think I need another spoon for that. Okay. Get it mixed in real good. Get that corn in there. And did I say three? That, that uh, two cups of corn, it was about three years of corn that I took off the cob, so I don't think I'm going to need any more than that. So just get it mixed in really, really good. And this salad here, you can eat it with anything. You can eat it by itself. It just makes a nice, healthy salad because, you know, kale is a super food. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now with this uh, Food Line brand balsamic vinaigrette. About a fourth of a cup is all we need in there. And then I'm going to put some of the uh, raspberry vinaigrette and a little bit of brown sugar. And pretty much it's going to be done. So, again, this is a real simple salad to make. What I'm doing here is just getting it shaken up because, you know, the oil floats to the top on this. So, that's about a fourth of a cup. A good fourth of a cup. Okay. A fourth of a cup of that raspberry and just mix it i mean it's just that seriously this is all there is to it and when you start eating it's hard to believe that that's all it took to put this salad together now if you like and i will put some tomatoes in there just chop them and put a few tomatoes in there you can put strawberries in there blueberries or any other kind of fruit that you might like because this mixes well and goes well with most um, fruits and veggies so so when I get it done, just put it in a container, sit in the refrigerator. And tomorrow, all of the vinaigrette and all the other seasons will have gone through it. And it will have that flavor like you won't believe. And of course, before we put it in there and get it ready to go on the table tomorrow, we have to take us a spoon to taste. Remember, we have to taste the food before we put it onto the table. Okay, 
Let's see. Let's take a taste. And look, I'm not going to double dip. This is the fork. I'm just going to use it and drop it in the sink. No double dipping. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's see about tomorrow. All these in ingredients would blend it together. And y'all pray with me now that this is all this going to go in that one bowl. But you know what? After I'm chewing, I think I need some salt. I need a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. Okay, stir it. Just make sure you get everything mixed in there really, really good. Surprisingly, that vinaigrette, uh, both those vinaigrettes had uh, a little sweet taste to it. So, I'm looking for my brown sugar, y'all. Who hid it? Okay, I'm looking for the brown shoe. It's late at night, y'all. Y'all know how it gets late at night. I probably set it in the refrigerator. Okay, Lisa found the problem. I've got Lisa and uh, <laughs> Lisa and Big John, my son and daughter, are sitting on the other side of the room looking at TV. She found the brown sugar for me. Y'all will meet them tomorrow. I'm not going to put them on the spot tonight. But y'all will meet those two lovelies tomorrow on the flavor train. I know Tanya's going to have them front and center. Whew, this smells good, y'all. Mm. Raw vegetables always smell good. They smell nature in them. Okay. So that brown sugar, that was about two tablespoons. You don't need a lot. Just enough to uh, pull that flavor together sort of blends out that vinegar so it's not so tart and sharp for you. Okay, we're done. Taste that again. Perfection. So I'm going to do right now, I don't think all this going to fit. What do y'all think? We're going to try We may have to put it in two containers. But this is all there is to it. This, this kale salad is done. And I'm going to say 30 minutes prep time to putting it in the bowl to get in the refrigerator. 30 minutes you can have this on the table. Not a lot of work. But a whole lot of goodness. So are y'all cooking tomorrow? Give me some feedback in the comment section. Let me know what you cook or if you cook, if you got invited out. Or if you went out to eat or something like that, let me know what you got on the table. And for those of you who are cooking right along with me, let me know that too. Okay. This kale salad is ready for the flavor train tomorrow. Makes a pretty dish. It's real healthy. And trust me, it tastes just as good as it looks. So hold on just a minute. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get that pasta salad out of the way. Okay, we're back with the pasta salad. This is uh, two uh, boxes of uh, pasta salad. I think it's probably uh, 16 ounces, and it's supposed to serve 12, but I think this will serve a lot more than 12. But we're going to go ahead and get started with it. I'm going to start out with um, a cup and a half of... This is... Um, I just went ahead before time. I ground up... Uh, bell peppers, onions, and celery to go in this salad. And then I'm going to hit it with a fourth a cup of uh, pickle relish. Go ahead and mix that in. And by the way, before I cook this uh, pasta, I went ahead and um, salted my water so that pasta is not so bland. So just put a little pot so I won't have to put a lot of salt content in here when I'm mixing. It's better to have the salt cooked into the food and that way it boils, the, what is it, the iodine, the oxidation or whatever's in salt. It kind of helps out with that. So it's all cooked out. Okay. 
And of course, I'm going to put some complete seasoning in here. A good tablespoon of complete seasoning. And I'm also going to put some of my Italian seasoning mix in here. My Tones Italian seasoning. The same Italian seasoning mix that I use in the spaghetti. And it just gives it that taste. Uh, that you want to have in a pasta. Okay, just mix that up really, really good. And basically, you use the same, um, except I'm not going to put the raspberry, I'm just going to put the balsamic uh, vinaigrette in here. About three fourths of a cup, because this is a lot of pasta, y'all. You know how much pasta does? If you think one box will do, Probably a half a box was okay because pasta seems to just multiply. I don't know how why it does that, but it does. Oh, that smells good. I love that vinaigrette, that balsamic vinaigrette. It has that little acid, acidy sweet taste, smell rather to it. It tastes so wonderful. Now, this pasta salad will not require a lot of mayo, so I'm just going to put a little bit of mayo in there. That's a good, what, half a cup, maybe? And if you don't want to put any at all, it's up to you. Make this dish yours. Or anything else that I cook, like I always say, whatever I'm putting in here, if it's something you don't like, don't want, can't have, just don't add it. And it'll come out. It'll be just fine. Because you're going to make it to please your taste and your family's taste or whoever's going to eat it. To modify, I modify recipes all the time. You know me, I make it up sometimes as I'm going along, so you're good. You see, there's just enough mayo in there to give that little creamy taste and that creamy look. It's wonderful, y'all. Wonderful. Okay, we almost done this pasta salad. Now, this kind of uh, Entrees here are very simple to make, and even if you make it in bulk, you know, I always cook in bulk. So, for people who like pasta, this would be just absolutely wonderful because by tomorrow, all those seasons would have gone through. And I'm gonna get my let's see, black pepper, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and uh, just not a lot of garlic now because garlic will take over if you there you go. Not even a half a teaspoon of garlic. And I need some onion powder in here as well. Okay. Just enough onion powder. Just enough, about a half a teaspoon. That's all of that when I finish that one off, though. Okay. So, all that's left to do now is just to mix it together real good. And I'm going to taste of it to see what it tastes like. And see if I need to add anything else to it. Okay. And again, tomorrow it will taste a whole lot different because all those seasons will be. So it's always good to make these ahead of time. Okay. Let's take a couple out of there. It's working, y'all. It's working. That's yummy. Okay, let's see. What am I missing? I know I missed something. Hang on one sec. Did I cut it off? It's okay. I'm missing something. What am I missing? For my fried rice. Fried rice.
process that all to be truthful. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Let's go back here. Okay, y'all, there it is. I've got a 15 pound brisket uh, in this pan here. I've decided I'm gonna have to start it out in the oven and I'll finish it up on the grill for about two or three hours. But this piece of meat has to cook in excess of 12 hours. So I'm gonna put it uh, the last three hours on the grill because I got so much other meat to cook. So it's gonna go into the oven at 350 it is 3 a.m. and it's gonna go in the oven until uh, about uh, noon tomorrow and then I'm gonna take it out I'm gonna put it on uh, on the grill and finish it up well first I'm gonna do my chicken and ribs I'm sorry not chicken and ribs but I'm gonna do my chicken on the grill the ribs of course are gonna be deep fried I've got them all uh, sauteed and ready to go so I'm getting ready to call it a night but this brisket is going to go into the oven right now so we'll get that full 12 hour cook so see you in the morning Big kitchen, more to clean. Y'all need the blender? It's over here. I can put it over there on the other side.
places I never go to. <laughs> it's, it's real sad that I don't go. Today. Okay, did I leave y'all hanging? Sorry about that. I thought I turned it down. But anywho. Okay, y'all, time for the baked beans. Don't ask me why, but I ended up with four of these cans that said serve six. I usually get the big gallon can, but four of these will be fine. So this is some Supposed to serve 24. Get all four cans. And now these are bushes. Oops. Bushes baked beans, y'all. Okay. And we're going to do a half a cup of uh, baby, sweet baby rays. Barbecue sauce. And, you know, we have to put the brown sugar in a little bit of mustard uh, just to give it that little tart, tangy taste. So hold on one second. I'll get it. Okay, we got everything in there ready to mix it up. Now have that half cup of brown sugar, a fourth cup of tomato ketchup, and a half cup of sweet baby rays, and a teaspoon of mustard. So all we got to do here, mix these babies together. Really, really, really good. That's a lot of beans to service for 24, y'all. And with all the other sides, if we have 24, that will be a gracious plenty. I got about uh, four or five other entrees going on here. If we got some hot dogs. We always do the hot dogs. Anytime I fire that grill, it's time to grill hot dogs. Not so much hamburgers, but hot dogs. Just uh, either smoked sausage, either one. Of course, today I did the hot dogs. Okay. Just make sure you get them mixed well. So that flavor and that seasoning will cook through the beans evenly. And again, I'm going to put these in the oven at 375. About an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, the bread and the beans will go in together. However, the bread will come out. The cornbread will come out long before the beans do. But just make sure everything is well mixed. Because, you know, baked beans are a crowd favorite. I know they are around here. Yeah, I got something going on in that pan there. Yowza. Okay. Now these are oven ready. Now because that pan is really full, here's the trick for those of you who haven't seen it before. Turn the ends of that pan up like that so it doesn't bubble over on your stove, hopefully. So if it bubbles past this, you had it way too full. But this was just a little extra added protection because they will bubble up and spill over if you don't make amends for it. Okay, so these are going to go into the oven here shortly. And uh, we'll be moving on to the fried rice shortly. Okay, y'all, there it is, my brisket masterpiece. Now, you want to talk about, we don't have a bone to fall off of, but if we had a bone, it would be falling off the bone. So it's falling off the, the side, the front, the middle. Look, this thing is so tender, we may have to pull it. I don't know even, I, you I am just flabbergasted, and this is the result of, okay, I cooked this brisket. Remember, I told you to put it into the oven because I didn't realize that it was such a big piece of meat. It was going to take long on the grill, and I needed to use the grill for other stuff. So, I put it into the oven. This is 15 pounds. Good morning, everybody. I'm back at it again. It is about 8 o'clock in the morning. I got some things going on in the kitchen. I'm getting ready right now to light the fire. So y'all journey with me as I get this fire going and then we're going to get this meat on the grill and uh, it's going to be a happy Labor Day in about four hours. Got that brisket in the oven. I'm going to finish it off like I told you in uh, on the grill rather. I'm getting ready to light my fire now to get my chicken going. So y'all 
hang out with me for a few minutes in the backyard. It's a beautiful day today. It's nice and cool and breezy right now. If you see, if you can look through the trees, the sun is beaming through. But praise the Lord, I got one big tree that's growing up out of the neighbor's yard, y'all, that's keeping me shielded from the sun right now. So I'm going to get it started. So y'all hang in there. Go ahead and get your charcoal and your lighter fluid now so we can get this fire going on this grill. I'm battle ready, y'all. Be free. Got to get my light piece of paper to light that fire. Get it going. I didn't bring it out of the house. I have to tear a piece off this bag, y'all. Um, <clears throat> free. Let me get this fire going. One side don't want to cooperate with me. I got to try it again. Okay, once that charcoal lighter fluid shifted onto that fire, the whole thing will start burning, and we'll have a fire going. You know, you got to get that, uh, you got to get the best fire. Now, like I told y'all before, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on this side over here. The charcoal might be a little damp, I'm not sure. Okay, I think my fire is starting to just catch up. It's just a slow burn fire this morning. But anyway, I just wanted to chime in with y'all and let y'all know I'm getting ready to get on this grill. It's going to take about 30 minutes for that fire to be ready. So y'all go ahead and get your charcoal ready. Okay, y'all, there you go. That fire's talking to me. Now, that's what I want to see that fire blaze up like that so those uh, briquettes can go ahead and get hot and burn the creso off of the... Uh, grill so we're pretty much ready to just let it do what it needs to do uh, when those charcoals get real nice and white uh, you don't put them in there while the uh, briquettes are red because it's too hot when they start turning a little white and ashy looking then it's time to go ahead and put your meat on so we're going to go in now and do some things in the kitchen because it's going to take a good 20 30 minutes of that to simmer down and get to where it needs to be and burn off the fluid and burn off I just try to put as least fluid on there as I can just so it doesn't have to burn off. I just had one of those little can things. It rusted out on me. I need to invest in another. But anyway, I've been doing this like this for 40 years, so it works well. So y'all, remember, if you haven't lit your fire yet, go ahead and get it lit. Now we can get this meat on the grill, y'all. Okay, y'all, as y'all can see, my kitchen is cooked, ready. I got my pots laid out. I'm gonna get, I got my rice cooked for my fried rice. I've got, I poured the broth off of that brisket, and that's what I'm going to cook my cabbage in. That'll give it a nice, nice flavor. And I'm going to get the, the cabbage. I'm going to go ahead and get my cabbage started, get them cut, and um, 
washed and ready to cook later. I'm not gonna cook them just right now. I wanna make a pan of cornbread. As you can see, I got my cornmeal mix already over here on this side of the room. So I'm ready to get this show on the road. It is now 10 past nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two. About three o'clock, about six hours from now, all this food has got to be ready, the table ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get this rice going, get this cabbage going. Um, Somebody asked me, how could you wash that cabbage whole? Well, let me do a little demo. This is what you do first. I say, I love y'all, so I'll go, I'll go to the trouble. Because if I'm teaching, I want to be understood. I won't be misunderstood. Okay, in this case, this cabbage has a lot of green on it. Uh, unlike the last time I took cabbage. And I'm doing cabbage. This is birthday, September birthday cooking to Jack, y'all. Okay? So. Get all the green with off, and you simply wash it off like this, like so. Wash it real good on the outside. And the cabbage is still off tight all the way closed in. And, you know, maybe something crawls through, through the thing. I don't see any holes in here, anything like that. So I'm safe in assuming uh -huh, that it's okay to tight. So I just wash these leaves off really, really good. Turn the sprayer on. Y'all getting the sight of me today in my work clothes. Okay, so what we're going to do, I need to move my camera. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it over here on the side. Okay, we just move it right on over here like so. It's a beautiful morning, and it's all about love because we're going to eat this morning, honey. We're going to eat. Oh, and in case... Oh, well, you, it'll be on the video, but there's a menu. It's up, and I don't think I'm going to make it. I hadn't made any changes so far. So, anyway, we're going to get back over here. And uh, just right there. Okay. And what I'm going to do, like I said, is just go ahead and wash and cut this cabbage, and it'll be ready for cooking. Um, when you make your, you know, you got your fire out there. You just go ahead and do the other little things in the kitchen that you got to do. And I got some more big work to do later because I've got to follow those um, baby back ribs. So that's going to be another big deal to do later on is to follow those ribs. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut this cabbage in four pieces, okay? Okay. Let's get that top out of the way. Get back over there over my rice. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do right here, I'm just going to cut this. You, in order to get into the cabbage, you got to cut this little 50 cent piece off right there. Okay, and once we get that cut off, we can go ahead and, and just cut it off far down enough so it opens the cabbage up pretty much, okay? And you can discard that little piece right there. I was into, I wanted to do some fresh kale today, but uh, they only had one bag of kale, so I had to do cabbage because my people, all my birthday folks love cabbage. They love it probably better than they do kale, but I was trying to switch it up. But what I did, I did find one bag of kale, and I made some fresh kale salad. So we have some fresh kale salad to go along with me. Okay, now that this cabbage is open. You see how tight it is in there? Nothing's crawling around in there. I don't know what uh, whoever thought they were talking about. But anyway, we're gonna cut that little heart out right there. Cut that little V out, rather. Just cut it right out. And remember, I told y'all when we were growing up, and I still eat them, I eat these little things here because they taste good. They have a little, um, tastes almost like a rutabaga. Okay, a little sharp. Almost a little burn to it. <clears throat> just cut that out. And then I just go ahead and rinse it again. Not open it like that. You know, the last, every time I do cabbage, I figure you, you understand some things like this. I don't try to show all of this. But what I want to do simply is to cut this cabbage up and get it ready for my pan. Um, as I've told you many, many, many times, I cut right here on my countertop. Just cut it up like that. Okay. 
running that bowl like so. If you want to cut in smaller pieces, you can certainly cut it in small pieces. You can just take it and go across it that way, and that breaks it down into smaller pieces. So now that's half your cabbage cut and in the bowl. So when I come back again, we'll be on to the next thing. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Probably I'm doing baked beans, so I'll probably come back and do the baked beans next. Okay, y'all, those fire, those coals are pretty hot now. I got my hot dogs on there. I'm going to go ahead and get them going while those coals are hot. Um, I really want to get my chicken on here first and see what space I have left for these hot dogs. So I'm going to get the hot dogs up top there. I got 24 uh, hot dogs up there. And I'm going to go ahead and put these chicken. I think I got about 40 pieces of chicken to put on here. So... We're getting ready to do this thing. Now, I'm going to have to keep my camera away from it. That fire is hot. I can't put my camera right up on there. So, I'm going to try to stick it right back where I had it. Way back here, we're going to go ahead and get this potty started, y'all. So, good Sunday morning again. Look at that little rascal that fell off of there. It's okay. We're trying to get our camera adjusted here, y'all. Maybe we get up here. Now, a while ago, I had it just right. <clears throat> I had it just... Oh, there we go. I have to turn it that away. Okay. That away. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get my chicken going. Get this chicken going, y'all. We're going to have some uh, Labor Day... Eats here. We're gonna have a meat sweat. Give me a little drink there. I lost my glasses, y'all. I can't find my glasses. I'm just going to lay the chicken on here randomly, and I'll go back and arrange them a little bit. I got legs and uh, drumsticks and wings, y'all, today. is on the grill right now. I'm going to go ahead and arrange it a little bit better and I'm going to close my lid and let it begin to cook. No hot dogs will go right up there on the top. I don't have any space for them like I thought I would down here on the bottom. Oh, wow. 
You can hear my air conditioning unit because I'm right out here by. But what I was saying was that brisket has been cooking since 3 a.m. Um, and it's now about 10. So it's been cooking a few hours. Um, let's see, from I'm, I'm tired and I can't hardly count. So I went, I, I put that brisket in the oven, I think about three. And I did a couple of things. I got in the bed and I got back up this morning at 7.30. So I almost got my five hours of sleep that I need to function on. Kind of tired, but like I said, it's a labor of love. You have to like to cook in order to do this. Because I like to do all kinds of cooking, not just in the kitchen. I like to get on this grill, too. Um, and what usually ends up happening with me is I have a lot of stuff in the kitchen as well as on the grill. So I prep some things in the kitchen. I'm going to get, once I turn this chicken, I believe in about 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to go back in the house and finish up some other stuff so for all practical purposes honey that chicken when y'all see it again hopefully it will be ready to eat so y'all hang in there now and if you haven't gotten your meal started please go on in there and get that food started okay y'all we're back out here we're ready to get this chicken off the grill hope y'all can see it pretty good okay it's ready to come off I'm gonna go ahead and start putting barbecue sauce on some and lemon pepper seasoning on some other ones. And in the interest of time, and to keep from leaving my stuff on too long, I'm gonna go ahead and put me some barbecue sauce. I got me some sweet baby rays mixed up here with some honey, a little bit of complete seasoning, and a little bit more black pepper. And what I'm gonna do is just do about half of this chicken barbecue. And then the other half, I'm going to put the lemon pepper on. How about that? But some like uh, lemon pepper, some like barbecue. So we're going to try to accommodate as many as we can based on what they like. So we're going to get these ones. This side is cooking kind of fast, y'all. So we get this side over here. I think they're not cooking out as fast enough. But we need to get them off anyway. They're nice and golden brown. They're kind of got a little crisp on them. Um, making sure, 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 I'm going to get those legs up here on the kitchen by themselves because I'm going to make sure those legs are done. So I'm going to do, I think I got five drum, I mean ten drumsticks. I'm going to put five and five. I'll do five barbecues and five regular. Okay. And that is the fifth one. I'm just going to go ahead and put some barbecue sauce on them. And I want to, I may have to throw them in the oven and let them glaze a little bit, I don't know. They're not looking like what I want them to look like. 
chicken off. As soon as I get the chicken off, I'm going to get that brisket out here out of the oven and get it done. Um, and it's going to just sit out here. To, I'm going to let it sit out here until the fire goes out because I know it's pretty much done. It's been inside in the oven all night and most of the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and do this lemon pepper the same way. I'm going to pour me some in that pan. I'm going to start putting it in there like so. legs on the end because I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to take those legs out and put them, run them back through the oven just to make sure that they're good to go. We got, still it's just 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. Still got plenty, plenty of time to um, get everything going like it should be. So we just get this, uh, I know Tanya likes lemon chicken, so hands are like lemon chicken, I believe too. They love barbecue. They like, you know, a stick of lemon. So whenever we go out, I know that she always makes sure she gets the lemon pepper chicken. So we're trying to do the birthday folks like they want to be lemon. Okay. What I'm going to do the same way I did with the uh, barbecue wings. That lemon mixture, all this is, is uh, about a fourth a cup of lemon juice, um, some lemon pepper seasoning, and about another fourth a cup of water. And that's it. That did it. It's just a done deal, y'all. The chicken is now ready to go in the house, y'all. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody praise the Lord. Honey, it's hot on this grill. And I thank God that this is a nice, cool, breezy morning. I can feel that sunshine on my face. I heard a man praying yesterday. He said, we just want to thank the Lord for the cold winter breeze. And Lord, while we at it, we want to thank you for the Good morning, sunshine. We want to thank you for the storms that rage in the sea because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Something cold is down. I feel a preach coming on y'all. So I'm so excited that this chicken, honey, when I tell you, I thought I was going to be out here on this grill still at noon doing this chicken, honey. My barbecue angels showed up this morning. And God knows I'm tired. So. We're going to go ahead and get this meat inside. See, my, my friends, the flies have come out now. Those uninvited flies have started, but that's all right. The Lord got me off the grill right now, so I'll be right back to put the brisket on. I'm back, y'all. I got the brisket out of the oven. It's been there since 3 a.m. It's 11 o'clock now, so however many hours that is, but now I'm getting ready to get it out of the pan. This is a 40-year-old roasting pan that I bought when Tansy was a baby, or rather my husband bought it. So what that waterless cooking pan, so I put it in there, wrapped it in foil, and covered it so it has cooked to perfection. It's pretty much done. I'm just gonna put it on here to get that smoke flavor and to get the barbecue sauce glazed on. So we're gonna leave it on here till the fire goes out. See, what y'all didn't just see, that thing so tender. When I tried to see, I thought I was gonna maybe just run that fork through it and just lift it out like that. But that thing is so tender, it's coming apart, y'all. It's coming apart, y'all. So look here. This going to take a little bit of maneuvering. I am going to have to actually put this on something. I'm going to have to get a pan to put this on. I won't put it on the grill now because you know why? Uh, this brisket is uh, falling off the bone. 
because this particular coop right here, it cooks stuff to perfection. So what I'm going to do is just go back into the house because I need a shower pan. Otherwise, I'd leave it on here. I'm going to go back in the house and get my shower pan and put it on there. And I shall return y'all. So keep y'all while I'm gone. Fan the flies for me, please. I see three. So y'all be looking out now. Okay, y'all. Here I go. I'm got, I've got my big pan to put it on here. Uh, it's going to be my serving pan as well. So y'all pray with me as I attempt to take this falling off, falling apart brisket on here to get some sauce on it. This is, I'm so excited because I know it's so tender. It's like butter, baby. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I know it's not going to work. Okay. I can probably take my special under there on that one. Maybe. Well, I'm going to get out of here. Ow. It's still hot, y'all. It's still hot, so I'll just shoot out the other thing. Let me see if I can. I just need to get under here sometime, boy. Turn over shoes. If it wasn't so hot, see, I'd just reach under there and grab it like a baby. You know how you turn a baby over? You know, we, look, you know what? I'm, you know what? I'm not gonna be defeated here. We're gonna, there we go. Get my foil out of there. Honey, don't even. Ooh, that's hot. Don't even panic. Don't even think about panicking now. That juice in there is really hot. But now, hmm, should have brought two spatulas. So maybe I can do it this way. Come on, Chef Angels. Come on, come on, come on. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we can maneuver it now. Ho, ho. Got it on now. Woo. Woo hoo. Got that rich shit on us. We're going to get this out. Get this out of the way. That's some witty in that pan, too. Okay, so we got that out of the way. We got the brisket on the grill, and what I want to do here, y'all, I'm just going to go ahead and put me some barbecue sauce on here and let it rip. I'm going to close this lid down, and like I said, I'm going to let this uh, brisket stay on here and just do what it do to the fire go out. I may, if, if I don't think I've got it to where I want it, I will put some more fire under it, but this is, uh, this is like an unconventional way of cooking it. I'm, I'm sure all y'all brisket cookers. Like I said, chef show us here. Okay, so I got the brisket on there. Got me some, uh, my sweet baby Ray and uh, some honey, extra honey in there. And I put a little bit of uh, complete seasoning in there. I hope y'all can hear me. My air conditioning unit is right out here and it's going. I'm gonna put it under here. And I'm putting it on here so it can smoke. I want that flavor, that smoky flavor in there, okay? May have to put a little bit more sauce on there. But for all practical purposes, it's ready to shut this uh, lid down and let it just smoke until the fire goes out, y'all. So thank y'all for praying with me that we got it on the pan. We did it. We did it. We got it on the pan, y'all. We win. Okay, y'all got the meat off the grill. That's the barbecued chicken. And that's the grilled lemon pepper chicken is done. The hot dogs are done. And the brisket is on the grill smoking. How about that? It's done. I'm just going to smoke it so it'll get that good smoky flavor off that grill. So now I'm going to do the cabbage, some cornbread, and some fried rice. And I'll just about be done with this meal, y'all. The last thing I want to do is fry those baby backs. And I'll do that just about in a couple hours before we're going to eat them. So hang on now. Did y'all go ahead and get your meal started? Because we're supposed to be doing this meal together. Remember now. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, got that uh, broth boiling for my cabbage. I won't have to use any uh, cooking meat in there because I'm using the uh, brisket broth in there. I'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar and uh, a little bit of uh, garlic powder in there just to um, season it up. I got about three pounds of cabbage over there waiting to go into that good old broth. So we're going to get the cabbage going and they'll be ready in probably about 30 minutes. Also, remember when you're cooking your cabbage, if you have the dark green parts, go ahead and put them in uh, probably about five or six minutes before you do the light green parts. It takes a few minutes longer to cook those pieces. 
and uh, we're gonna add a little vinegar to this pot and we're gonna get this taste going just like we want it. Tastes like old home cabbage. So you love a good pot of cabbage with some cornbread. And the twist here today, of course, is the brisket broth on the cabbage, okay? To the oven for how long? I don't know, however long. So anyway, this is the end result, my masterpiece brisket, y'all. I'm just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Okay, y'all, it's time to get the fried rice going. So what I've got here, I've already pre-shredded my bell pepper, celery, and onion. And I'm just sauteing in a little bit of olive oil so we can get the fried rice going. This dinner is coming to an end. I'm not putting any kind of meat in it or anything like that. It's going to be a veggie fried rice pretty much. Okay, so I've got uh, a ton of goodness in there. See all that bell pepper, Sarah, and onion, and I did this ahead of time. This saves time. I did this last night when I was just sitting around. And I also want to put some, uh, just for color, and they have a lot of flavor to them too. These little tri-colored um, peppers, this is a yellow one. I'm just going to put them in, cut them in ringlets to make that rice really pretty and tasty at the same time. So, this sauteing process is probably about 15 minutes. Um, I think the last time I made fried rice, maybe I made shrimp fried rice. Yeah, I did. did excuse me, shrimp fried rice. So, this is just a little veggie fried rice. So, now, let, I, I got a question for y'all now. Are y'all with me? If y'all got your meat already done, you, what, what, where are y'all? I don't hear anybody talking. I got my all my meat done except for those uh, the fried uh, baby backs, and those I'm gonna do them in about 15 minutes because like, they'll be nice and hot and crispy. But all the other stuff is done now. Uh, the beans are in the oven. The uh, cornbread is in the oven. The chicken is the barbecue chicken. The lemon chicken is done. The hot dogs are done. The cabbage is done. Now I'm getting the rice done, so we're almost there. And uh, my family in Florida, I hope you all are doing well. I understand that that uh, storm bypassed y'all and that you're doing okay. So wherever that storm is, we're still praying that uh, anybody in harm's way or in the path of that storm will survive um, whatever it brings. So we just pray that it'll just blow on over and go on out to sea and exit so we're, we're still praying y'all so we're still in prayer mode okay uh i'm gonna go ahead and put me some gold mountain seasoning on that uh, on these veggies give it a little bit more flavor and we're gonna hit it with our i'm having to take everything out the cabinet because i had to get stuff cleared off here okay Tablespoon, of, <clears throat> excuse me, tablespoon of complete seasoning. Um, and I'm going to do a tablespoon of garlic powder. And remember, we season each ingredient unto itself and then we put it together and everything is wonderful. Okay. And I'm going to put a little bit of soy sauce at the end. I don't do a lot of soy sauce. Okay. So I'm just going to let these veggies just saute and get nice and tender and then I'll start putting in the rice and uh, a few more seasons to get that season going through the rice. So, you know what? It's getting kind of cloudy outside now, thing like, is it? I'm going to have to get to the weather channel see what's going on because, you know, these storms sometimes, they'll go out and come back and we might get some rain, seems like. So I hope everyone remains uh, in a safe situation so that nobody has to really evacuate their homes because I, I can imagine that's an ordeal. I've never had to evacuate for any reasons, but I can just imagine <clears throat> having to leave your home with that kind of imminent danger lurking overhead. So we are still in prayer mode. Always, well, we're always in prayer mode because we always talk about praying without ceasing, but we are specifically praying 
about this weather. So we're just going to continue to allow this to saute and then we'll come back and put everything together. Okay, we're ready to start putting the rice in, y'all. It's ready to be fried live. So we're just going to go ahead and we're not going to just spoon it in. We're just going to, in fact, I got so much rice going on here. I'm having to do two separate skillets. So we're going to start with that one there. And over here, I hope, hopefully you can see over here on the other end of the stove. We're going to go ahead and put that one and get that one going as well. There we go. And that's enough in each one to get us going. And we're going to start putting in, <clears throat> we already got our sauteed veggies, just a little dash of your soy. And that's about as much soy as you'll see me use in this dish, because I'm not a soy sauce girl. Uh, but you will see me do some garlic powder. And we're just going to work both of these skillets at the same time. How about that? How about that? And we're going to get the complete season going in there. Okay. So this is basically just a, a simple veggie fried rice. You just go ahead and start stirring in the uh, veggies into the rice. Okay. And I've used olive oil as my base oil. And of course, I got to put a little bit of that complete season in there. Y'all know that. I'm sorry. Gold Mountain season. Um, one of the uh, seasonings that you're finding fried rice, of course, is a little bit of ginger. So we're just going to hit it with just a sprinkle of ginger. You know, ginger has a strong taste, so you can't really use a whole lot. But I like it in my smoothies, and I love it in my coffee. It's great in hot drinks. And, of course, you know, I always use turmeric. So we're going to put a little dash of turmeric in each one okay we're just gonna keep it moving and what we're doing here mainly is mixing because everything is already done but so we're mixing mixing okay so this is what we're pretty much going to do from here out is just get everything mixed in really really good together and once we get it all mixed up we're going to transfer it to another pan so hold on and we'll be back shortly Okay, pretty much I've got both pans going. Let's see. The other pan is over. I think everything is just about done with this rice. We just need to change pots, uh, change containers with it rather. And uh, it is going to be ready for the flavor train here very, very, very shortly. The flavor train will be on in later. I'm kind of a little bit ahead of the game. I just got the uh, spare ribs to fry and I'll be done. So y'all stay tuned. Okay, y'all, it's time to get these ribs going. So we're finna do some ribs. This is them, my children in the background. Pay no attention to them. We're gonna get these ribs going, y'all. That, 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 sure. When he said that, I was like, oh, um, okay. Well, I gotta get the ribs out the refrigerator first. Okay, y'all, we're ready to start dropping ribs into the grease. Um, I battered them up, as you can see. A little bit of buttermilk on them. Y'all gonna eat this food right. today. Don't come back over here. Oh goodness. No, it's all good. 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 No, it's all good.
say what you want me to pick you for what do you want for breakfast oh you could just pick me some eggs and get me a processed uh fish uh, uh processed salmon burger <laughs> Okay, y'all, these ribs are rolling. I got in my two more pans of ribs. I got one, whew, two pans out, and two pans to go. And still got, I said, these ribs like the ever, never end the story. I kept pulling them out the bag, and they just kept right on coming, y'all. I don't know how many, so I had three slabs of ribs. So three slabs make a lot of individual pieces. I think it seemed like me each each slab I think had 15 ribs. So that's 45 rib lit up. And you know what I'm gonna go ahead and fry up every last one of them. I was gonna leave some in the bag. I don't want no have no third pan though. Shoot. Okay. I'm gonna fry all of these, y'all. I'm gonna try to leave some in the bag, but you know what? If all those boys, well, they if they don't show up today, they'll show up tomorrow. And uh, as you can see, there's plenty of ribs. Footnote, y'all, this dinner is not only for Labor Day. This is our September birthday month. That's why I'm cooking all these different foods here today. So, this is September birthdays. Toodaloo.